In today's video, we will have a look on creating gradients not using the gradient tool, but with procedural textures. These gradients are harmonic gradients and can definitely be used to spice up your artwork in a creative manner. So let's start by adding a fill layer by using the layer menu. I will set its color to red. Now, time for the procedural texture, which we can add from the Live Filters shortcut in the Layers panel. Also, let's make sure it is above the fill layer we just created. The first formula we're going to add is X divided by W, which is going to be applicable only to the red channel. The second formula will be I divided by H for the blue channel. Have a look at that. Pretty awesome. We can now play with the channels to which these two formulas apply to. For example, instead of using R and B, I can use B and G or R, B and G. If I only use two channels, for example, the R and the B as we started out, we can change the color of the fill layer below and move closer to the green. Green will be added to the mix, making our gradient more greenish. You can also experiment with the formulas to create interesting combinations. For example, we can use the H divided by W for the second formula to get a horizontal gradient. Important thing to keep in mind is that there should be a fill layer below the filter layer. If not, the filter has no layer to work with, resulting in an empty screen. The procedural texture we used is what I like to call a fixed procedural filter, meaning we have no control where the effect starts. Let me hide the current filter and add another live procedural texture filter. This time, instead of using the X and the I, I'm going to use the RX and RI variables, which stand for Relative X and Relative I. As you notice, the resulting grading looks a bit different. Relative X and Relative I values start from the center of the document. But the cool thing is, we can modify this by dragging on the canvas while the filter dialog is open. This gives me the possibility to adjust and move the gradient as I please, which generates much more possibilities. Pretty awesome! Double-clicking on the canvas will reset the relative origin to the center again. If you want to replace the black area, you can for example add a curves adjustment by pressing Command M and maximize the green channel in the 0 to 0 0.25 range by using the min and max values. While using a Curves Adjustment, another cool effect is to apply a default curve in Negation Blend Mode, which I can quickly demonstrate by resetting the curves and then setting the Blend Mode to Negation. It creates this laser look, which definitely can be used creatively in futuristic compositions. Here is another variation, which looks great. I will share all the used formulas and macros in the description if you're interested. As you notice, the created gradients look very harmonic and are ideal to blend with images. I can group the fill and the procedural texture and apply it with a low opacity in soft lined blend mode to an image. Pretty cool! I have used a regular fill as a base, but we can also directly apply it to an image. Let's move the image to the top and add a new procedural texture on top of it. I'm just going to use the default X divided by W and I divided by H formulas for the R and B channel. Pretty nice, isn't it? What we also can do to create interesting gradients is using gradient fills instead of a regular fill. Let me add a fill layer and then fill it with an elliptical gradient. Let's use the colors from white to blue. I will add the procedural texture filter again on top and use our basic formula with the X and the I. This time I'm going to change the blend mode of the filter to linear light. Nice! I will also change the blend range of it so it gradually applies to the brighter areas. Beautiful! I can now move the bottom elliptical gradient to experiment in finding a nice interesting gradient. As an additional step, let's add an HSL adjustment on top of it. With the HSL adjustment, we can shift the colors to our liking. Just awesome! Let's group these three layers and enable the image below. 
I can now blend this group with the image, for example, with hard light blend mode. The effect is of course too strong, but you get the idea. The cool part, as I mentioned earlier, I can move the center point of the elliptical gradient layer and even change the opacity of the secondary color to control the effect. This image is not a good example to apply this effect, but if I use a fantasy image, it looks gorgeous. A quick disclaimer before I leave you. This method works only on RGB 8 and RGB 16 bit. It doesn't work on 32 bit HDR. I hope this video has given you some inspiration and food for experimentation. Let me know in the comments what you think and what other variations you have come up with. Thank you for watching and until the next video.